Hello everyone, welcome back to Level Up Your Life, where starting 2024 off, we are wisdom walking through the book of Proverbs. Today is January the 4th. I am Minister Deborah Pickett, and I'm excited to be with you today. We are in Proverbs the 4th chapter. I want to drop this on you. What you do speaks so loud, they don't hear what you say. Now, a couple of days ago, I mentioned that phrase in another chapter we were um, studying, but I mentioned it from a more positive perspective, meaning when your words match your character, match your lifestyle, people will tend to want to follow you, listen to you. You will find favor with God and man. The way that I'm mentioning it tonight is the way that I have taught it and said it. I don't know how many times throughout my career um, in coaching and training parents, right? What we do as parents speak louder than the words that come out of our mouth when we are training up our children. In chapter four of Proverbs, this is an, an, an example of that very phrase. When, you, when we start out reading this chapter, Solomon tells his children, he had four, I believe four sons, and he told them, listen, children, to a father's instruction. He says that in verse one, he says something similar in verses 10 and 20. In verse 10, he says, hear my child and accept my words. In verse 20, he says, my child, be attentive to my words. Now, what parent does not want their children to obey them and to follow the instructions that they give them? And so this is what chapter four is all about. It's about parental advice, where Solomon was giving advice to his sons. Let's read verses one through nine and hear the advice that Solomon was giving to his children. I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version tonight, um, but let's jump in. Proverbs chapter four, beginning with verse one. Listen, children, to a father's instruction and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, and my mother's favorite, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live, get wisdom, get insight, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth, do not forsake her and she will keep you, love her and she will guard you, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever else you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a fair garland and she will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Now, these were the words that King David spoke to King Solomon that now King Solomon is now sharing with his children. Do you hear legacy in there? So we know that King David was the king that defeated Goliath before, prior to him becoming king. That's what caused him or put him on the path uh, to becoming king. And so he defeated Goliath. King Saul was the, the king at that time. When King Saul disobeyed God and God removed him from being king, David was made the king. And so we know that David ended up um, committing adultery with Bathsheba. There was a war going on and he happened to see her and he wanted her and he took her, but she was the wife of one of his um, soldiers. And because he had sexual relations with her, she ended up pregnant to hide his sin. He put her husband on the front line. He was murdered. 
and David brought Bathsheba into his home to be his wife. And he thought he had gotten away with it, except God's prophet came to him and through a parable informed David of his sin. David was so hurt and repented greatly before the Lord. And if you read Psalm 51, you will hear his prayer of repentance regarding that situation. Well, as um, justice would have it, God did not allow that child to live, the child that uh, was created through his adulterous relationship. But Bathsheba did get pregnant again, and Solomon was the result of that union. Um, and Solomon followed his father as king. And so this advice that Solomon is giving his sons is something that David gave to Solomon. But here's the kicker. And parents, I want you to really hear me on this. We are not perfect. No parent, no person is perfect. The only perfect person that has ever walked this earth is Jesus Christ. Now, Solomon was considered the wisest man who ever lived. God said there would never be anyone wiser before him or after him. And so we give Solomon his props and, and as the wisest person. But hear me when I say this, parents. Teach your children what is true, what is right. And as much as lies within you, you are their number one role model. It is not their teacher. It is not their coach. It is not their grandparent. It is not their godparent. It is not their uncle. It is you as the parent. God is going to hold parents accountable for how we trained up our children because they were his gifts to us or they are his gifts to us. The Bible says that children are in heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. And so as parents, when we sit down and we talk to our children um, or our grandchildren and we're um, speaking life over them, because I know that's what we're doing. We're not speaking negativity into their lives. We're speaking life into them and we're um, sharing with them sound wisdom. And we may be sharing bits and pieces of our lives um, and examples of things that we have endured so they will not go that way. And you must use wisdom and be careful in what you share with your children because once a door is open, it's open in their lives. Once you expose them to something, you can't take it back. Our words are like toothpaste. Once we push them out there, we can't put it back in the tube. And so let's be careful as we teach and train our children wisdom principles. Make sure that our lives are in alignment with what we say. One of the things that I did, I'm a mom of four sons. For those who may, may be watching this and know me and know my sons, uh, one of the things that I, I always tried to do was to be honest, tell the truth. And if I said I was going to do something, I did it. So I made sure to watch my words that I would not utter anything out of my mouth that I could not take back later and that they could hold against me or, or view me as someone who was not consistent or truthful with them. And so I ended up divorced after 13 years of marriage and I had to raise four sons and they were steps, they were stair steps. So at the time of my divorce, my oldest was 11. So counting down from there, he was 11, the next one was 10, the next one was eight, and the youngest was seven. So just imagine me uh, raising four boys that, you know, throughout their life, but really um, by myself at that point in time, all the way up through uh, them becoming men. Um, but one of the things I did, like I said, I always followed through with what I was going to say younger in your younger years. So I didn't wait until they were those ages to start teaching and training them. I started when I was pregnant by speaking life into them. And as they were born, I made sure that I taught them the word of God, that I read them the scriptures, that I taught them the scriptures, and that I had a home that was orderly so that they grew up with structure. All right. And so when I would train them up, I had that example before them. So when they became teenagers, listen to what I'm saying. When they became teenagers, 
I had earned myself leverage that I didn't even know, but that because I followed wisdom from the word of God, understanding and trusted the Lord in rearing them up, the Lord blessed me to be able to develop leverage with them. So when they became teenagers and they got out of pocket at times and I would say things to them, they believed me because all throughout their life, I always did what I said I was going to do. And they knew not to test me on that. So I had bought leverage with them. So a lot of the things that other single mothers, it doesn't matter the color of your skin because children will try you no matter what your color of your skin is. But um, a lot of things that other parents were having to um, experience with their children as teenagers, especially boys, a lot of those things I did not have to experience. Now, there were some experience. Let me just say that. <laughs> there were some real, real experiences. But a lot of the ones that we hear about all the time, gangs, drugs, jail, all of that stuff, um, I did not have to experience that. And so remember, just from reading this passage of scripture, this chapter of in Proverbs, King Solomon remembered what David taught him. But I'm sure King Solomon also watched his, his father's life. King Solomon's children listened to what King Solomon taught them, but they also watched their father's life. And this is going to be great because at the end of this month, when we wrap up, I, I'm just preparing myself to do a teaching on, on King Solomon being the wisest man and where that got him at the end of his life. I'm just waiting for that moment. But for us today, let us remember that our words carry weight for ourselves, for our children, and for anyone else who we provide information to, counsel to, instruction to. You are preaching a sermon every day that you get up and walk out of that door. You're telling people who you are without even opening your mouth. And I just want us to embrace that and understand that. Now, the words that King Solomon shared that his father told him, he likened wisdom as to a woman. And I think that's very interesting because David has a passion for women <laughs> and so did King Solomon. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. A total of a thousand women was in his harem. He did not have to be with the same woman twice in one year because he had a thousand women at his, at his uh, fingertips, right? And so for him to liken wisdom as a female, I'm really gathering from that, that he wants his sons to know, hey, the most important is wisdom. You're going to see and meet a lot of women in your life, but this one right here, wisdom, this is the one that if you embrace her, if you listen to her, if you are attentive to her, she will exalt you. She will honor you. She will put a fair garland on your head and bestow a beautiful crown on you. So wisdom is, is personified as a woman, but if we teach and train our sons and our daughters to embrace wisdom and understanding, and we already have learned that the beginning of that is the fear of the Lord, then they will lead more productive, sound lives. And that is what we want for, for them as parents. But we need to remember to live the lives that we teach them about. We do not want to lead our own children down the wrong path. So read Proverbs chapter 4 again with these think thoughts in your mind and just meditate on that. And like I always share with you all, share this with your child. Share this with your children so that they're learning these wisdom principles as you are learning them. And then you all can walk in wisdom together in 2024. I pray God's blessings on you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on day five on tomorrow. Have a great day.